Welcome to another episode of Simon Says, where facts come first. I'm your host, Jenny Simon. And today it's no different. We take the same format. We give you an update. We get into the meat of the matter and then we wrap up. We want to thank God for the rain. You know, we, re we were really, really deserving of it. And um, we hope that this is just the beginning and we get lots of rain and then we'll be able to bathe from the shower. <laughs> Those of us bathing in buckets or cups, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, it, it's really, really, we really need to thank God for the break today. Okay, um, so we'll take a quick break and come right back and get down to it. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. Welcome back. So we have news since last episode um, and our interview with Ms. McQueen up at her water plant. We have an update on Friday the 24th May. Ms. McQueen got a call from the Ministry of Infrastructure in the person of the CTO, I think a Mr. Blash, um, that, that is the Chief Technical Officer, um, that they will be visiting on Monday the 27th, May 2024. Indeed, they did. And um, work supposed to begin next week, right? So I guess to start on Monday the 3rd of June. So this is, we can say, well, fingers crossed, fingers crossed, because um, remember after Simon says they, they called, they did the lot, the second ribbon cutting of, of the housing. We come to that later on. And also the um, there was a launch of, of primary health care it go off just, just a couple of days after Simon says as well, or the day after, as a matter of fact, I think it was the day after we spoke about the, the polyclinic in St. John and, and, and stuff. So we come back, we get back to that. So um, we're hoping that Ms. McQueen does get her road. It's raining now, and it will be even more dangerous for her and her um, drivers and so on that, on that road. Moving along, um, the powers that be are yet to reach out to the workers at um, the, the, the construction at the, the, the cricket stadium um, and they applied. So the monies that was owing to the, well, the ones who the company owe their salaries, they yet to get the salaries and they're still being told that it was used to pay up NIS, which it was apparently because um, I, on, in an update, I was told that NIS was paid. paid they paid up for the workers and they, and they did go back to August last year and not as they were trying to do to say from March. Um, the workers, the, the spokesperson for the group, she is still struggling to get some almost $6,000, I think, um, or $6,000 plus dollars that they owe her. They told her they used it to pay up NIS. She has evidence where they have deducted NIS from um, her salary before. And so um, what did they do with it? But they kept her salary, hijacked her salary to pay NIS. She's struggling between NIS and then back and forth to, to get her monies. I think there definitely has to be an invention um, of some government minister ministry there must be an invention for this thing to get sorted out um nobody no one no one the ministry of labor the ministry of infrastructure and their ministers minister deacon mitchell and minister claudette joseph no one has reached out to them as yet in an interview on the bob report um on may 12th 2024, when asked about what's going on at the, at, the, at the renovations, the project at the stadium between the workers and the, the Chinese, this is what Minister of Labor Claudia Joseph had to say. Let us talk about 
are, are the occupational climate for workers at, at the Chinese funded stadium renovation project. Now, uh, several messages uh, were sent our way uh, from, from, from people alleging to be workers at the site in which they have been raising concerns about their main employee on the project, uh, which is the Shanghai Bio Company. They actually won the bid uh, to, uh, to, to do the renovations at the cricket stadium. And we should caveat that by saying that the contract, the contract, the contractual arrangement did not start with this administration, that it started with the previous administration. And I suspect that they inherited that contractual arrangement that was in place for the renovation of the stadium. So that point needs to be made. But Minister, the concerns that uh, these workers rain, uh, raise range from a refusal of the company to pay NIS for the employees. Uh, concerns around um, being forced to work for more than nine hours a day. In fact, I raised that in last week's editorial, that that, that, that contravenes uh, the, the labor code of, of the country. Some of the workers uh, allege discrimination at, at the hands of the employees, as well as not ver very clear working terms and conditions. Have you been following that issue uh, in respect of what the uh, Ministry of Labor is doing and the Labor Commissioner's Office is doing to address those concerns? Yes, we, um, we've we gotten um, reports and some of them quite concerning. Some of them, if true, will constitute um, direct breaches of our existing laws. And I must say, we've had instances in the past in on, on other sites, and I think if it is that the company is engaging in these practices, they will be well advised to find out what happened um, recently when another employer tried similar. Um, we at the Ministry of Labor will not tolerate breaches of our, of our labor laws, especially when those breaches amount to abuse of workers. So in that regard, we have made arrangements, we will be tending to this matter in quite um, in a hands-on and head-on manner in the coming weeks, including um, engaging with the company and other related and interested parties, as well as engaging the workers. And we will do so um, appropriately according to law uh, so that Remedies, remedies can be put in place that we do all in our power to remedy whatever issues are taking place on the site. But we have received the reports and will attend to them most aggressively. So, so there, there will be an aggressive approach, and it's not going to be a case where, uh, because uh, it's, 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 it's a sort of a a gift of renovation from the, the government of the People's Republic of China that it will be swept under the rug. And I say this against the backdrop of the uh, the dem da us rhetoric that was said by the previous Minister of Tourism when the gazebo was uh, built at the Granitang uh, Lake there. You remember that? The dem that feed yeah. us? At least you did. But I think you're not alone. Least... Don't, don't subscribe to that philosophy at all. And um, yes. we yes. after all our workers, and when I say all workers, all persons working in Grenada, where they are, whether they are nationals or not, the law, the laws will apply to them, and we will ensure that whatever issues that are taking place on that site are speedily remedied. Mm -hmm. Okay, first let me clear up that um, Dr. Bob spoke about the contract was signed before with the previous administration. Yes, there was a signed contract with the previous administration. However, this administration, NDC administration, resigned, if you want to say that. They signed it with that company again. So, of course, and, and, and I would see no reason why not. You don't, you know, because the, the project it wasn't started as yet. So they, they did their own signing. Now, to the Minister of Labor, what is aggressive? This is three weeks later. You're talking almost four weeks, a month later, actually. You're talking about aggression. Where, where is the aggression? Right? You nothing has been done to date. 
in connection with the Ministry of Labor and the workers and what's going on down there at the stadium. So I, I urge you, Minister, Minister Claudia Joseph, I urge you to move quicker, move faster, to deal with the situation down there. There are people who are depending on you guys because nothing, they're not getting through to the Chinese, to the um, NIS, they're, they're person waiting on NIS to, for, for sick, um, their sick benefits and, and can't get it because they have no pay slip, as a matter of fact. They can't show that their monies were deducted, right? They get no place pay slip from these, these people. There are lots of things to be sorted out down there. And so I urge you to, um, to, to move a little swifter. No word from the prime minister or the minister, of, the Ministry of Infrastructure, who is the line minister and ministry responsible for the project, but um, understandably so. Uh, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell has not been on island long enough to pay attention. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell left on April the 11th with a huge delegation to Cuba, returned on Sunday, April the 14th, overnighted in transit and left on Monday the 15th. I'm sorry, Sunday the 14th. Did I say 18th? The 14th, right? Um, overnighted and left on Monday the 15th um, for Athens, Greece, returned on April the 18th. April the 21st in Grenada, there was a Sustainable Tourism Conference, STC, and on the 22nd April uh, of April, the Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO, that was held here in Grenada. So he came home for the, that conference. Excuse me. April the 25th, there was a sitting of the House of Representatives. April the 27th, he wrapped up his WASH program in St. David. May the 7th, held um, his transportation press conference um, where he presented the commission, the transportation board, the commission to the people. He, um, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell, being the line minister for that as well. On May 11th, the Prime Minister headed a delegation to Ghana to um, the 31st African Summit and returned on the 18th, that's May 18th, just in time for the Caribbean Investment Summit, um, CSI 24, hosted here in Grenada on May the 22nd to the 25th. He left Grenada on the 25th, I believe, um, to Antigua. Right? He, went, he left from there to Antigua, um, headed another huge delegation for the fourth international developing states um, since, since four, and that was from the 27th to the 30th. So I am not sure if he's back as yet. Um, we never know really, we know. We don't, most times we don't know when he leaves, we don't know when he gets back. There's no announcement made that he's back. Um, uh, and in that, that, that huge delegation I spoke of, to me, there were people there and you asked, why were they there? I mean, what was Minister, Minister Gloria Thomas doing in, in, in that conference? Um, Chief Minister of Housing and, and Social Securities. Um, he always travels with a photographer. He's permanently on the travel list. A photographer is getting full time a full time salary from the government of Grenada, so he can travel to take out photos of the Prime Minister Wednesday. Also, his um, social media manager, for the most part, travels with him all the time. I it's wastage. Not because you can do it, you do it. it it's wastage. And, and just a whole lot of previous persons, when there are young persons in that ministry, that environmental ministry, where, where Minister um, Kareem James sits, that can benefit from those conferences. Even the prime minister didn't have to be at that, because we have a minister, um, um, a line minister. Even he didn't have to be there, but he's at all um, 
all all those conferences he represents Grenada in every every way possible um I believe this is or will be just a turnaround for him when he gets home now because I noticed there is a meeting in the Bahamas on the first of June so he might be gone again no time he has for such trivial matters of uh, like what's going on in the stadium well, he did, you know we all know that 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 he um he's not a workers kind of guy uh, you know anyways you know one can just pretend one can only pretend i should say for so long you know you can pretend that you're for the people the poor people and but if it's not in you it's not in your dna you cannot it, you, you you can't keep it up you can't keep it up sooner or later you fall right back into who you really are we move right along because there's a lot happening i mean and it's a lot to get it in one program and we want to keep the time you know the grenada invitational breaking news i want to start off with this clip because and i'm doing so because i think it, it it gives a holistic although it's not local um idea of, of of where we are what really happened and 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 the, and the effect it have on persons that were involved and and were to be a part of this invitational so we have breaking news the invitational games have been cancelled and cancelled permanently let's hear the script Welcome back to the Sports Mag Zone. We're going to start things off with a track and field, or no track and field, because fans were left disappointed after the organizing committee of the Grenada Invitational announced late Monday evening that the meet has been cancelled. The organizers in a statement said that the socio-economic challenges were the determining factor. Here's a statement put out by the organizers. Despite the best efforts of the board of directors and the local organizing team of the Grenada Invitational, the synergy, the enthusiasm, the energy and the commitment to produce a once in a generation event did not materialize. With time running out, the board of directors of the Grenada Invitational took the painful decision at a meeting late Monday the 27th of May, to cancel the 2024 Grenada Invitational as well as round up for good the franchise and brand that is Grenada Invitational. We are extremely pleased that we were able to bring to Grenada quality world-class athletic competition. We would like to commend and extend a hearty thank you to all who contributed in one way or the other to the 2017, 2018 and 2019 editions of the Grenada Invitational. Now, the world and Olympic champion Kirana James, two-time double Olympic sprint champion Elaine thompson Hero were among the over 100 athletes set to take part in the event, which was programmed to be live on Sportsmax as well. So, a shocking development late last night, uh, Mariah, and hugely disappointing because um, in the Caribbean, we have had you know countries like Grenada, in this case, uh, Jamaica, Bermuda, the Bahamas, uh, giving their, their local fans a taste of global high-class competition and uh, Grenada falling off the wagon here in a, a sudden decision, we have to say, because this, this has been shocking for us. Yeah, you say disappointing, Lance, and disappointing in many different fronts because, of course, we can speak from broadcast um, standpoint. I know our team was, of course, working, getting ready, putting things in place to, of course, head across the Grenada to ensure that we did our first class coverage as we tend to do all the time. So of course our team was already putting that in place. So for me that came as a shock where that is concerned. The athletes as well, we have to think about them. They have been preparing, of course looking forward to this. This is an Olympic year. All of these meets are very, very important lands because it will help them to be able to gauge where they are at right now in their progress as they get ready for the Olympics, which we know world class event and all eyes will be glued to that. Um, to me, I will say that the fact that the, 
decision was made at the board meeting on May 27. I think the organizers, of course, were in limbo. They've waited too long to, of course, drop this press release. And many of the people that our team would have reached out today, I know Gerard Morrisili, one of our producers here and presenters at Sportsmax, has been calling around Lance to try to get people to come on the show to, of course, shed some light, give our viewers the opportunity to know what really happened. Because for me, when things happen and they're not very clear, it causes a lot of he say, she say confusion. And I think this is one of that, um, one of those situations what I get from the press release, for good. Mm. This might be the end of it for good, yeah. based on the wording of it. I'm hoping that I'm wrong, but that's the sense that I'm getting. And to me, a lot of athletes will suffer because this is one of the invitational meets that we've seen some of the best talents come through. Of course, we've seen them develop. We've seen them rise. Names like, I mean, you listed a couple, but Shelly Ann Fraser Price, Karani James. So for me, it's disappointing, but not just disappointing, but in so many different levels. And I have a massive problem with the timeline. The fact that you decide today for tomorrow. Yeah. And I think, to be frank, I think it's been an embarrassing last couple of hours for the, the organizing committee of the Grenada Invitational. And uh, I, I, I would think that part of the reason why we've had difficulty getting someone from the organizing committee or at least some uh, track and field expert from, from Grenada to uh, have an input on the show today is an illustration that it, it's an embarrassing development for Grenada. And as you correctly pointed out, Mariah, coming really late because it is obvious that they were having difficulties in recent weeks and they may have been trying, as the release said, um, their utmost to try to to keep the meat on. And as you referenced just now, the franchise has folded, which means that uh, the meat could very well not happen again unless uh, another franchise is resuscitated and the effort to, to you know, revive the event. Because as you pointed out as well, um, well there are not many of these meats throughout the Caribbean. And um, athletes, especially in a year like this, where it's the Olympic year, we're just over two months from the start of the Olympics. Um, well, just under two months, really. Um, it, is, it is a key period here for these athletes. Uh, to be specific, we can look at Elaine thompson Hero, the double-double yeah. sprint champion who um, had a tame opener uh, last weekend and would have been looking forward to this Grenada Invitational to probably step up on the effort that she had last weekend. And uh, now that meet is taken off the roster for her. So she would have to find other events now to try and sharpen herself for the late June Jamaica trials, which are expected to be hot. Um, the uh, Jamaican track and field landscape is so competitive that you know, while athletes, uh, even the elite ones, look ahead to the Olympic Games, they first have to look to the, the Jamaica trials because you have to get there first or get through that first before you go on to the majors, the global events, which come up later on in the summer. But disappointing for me that we haven't been able to nail down someone from the Grenada Organizing Committee to to spell out the difficulties that we have we've, that they have experienced in having to make this drastic decision and uh, the decision coming just over a week before the event was scheduled to be staged, which means that athletes and officials and fans who would have been traveling to Grenada would have already booked tickets. Well, that's what I'm go. thinking. Yeah. So you know, I take your point that. If they were having difficulties, um, it, it would have been better for everyone. It would have been if the professional. Decision, yeah, <laughs> the decision was made a lot earlier than it has. But I, I gather that the reason why they, they, they took so long to make the decision is because they were trying to Agreed. leave no stone unturned in trying to make sure the event happens. But obviously a financial issue because these events are not um, cheap to put on. But... Um, yeah, I, this one hit me hit me with like a big brick last night yeah. when, when I saw the story. And the last event came in 2019. I was doing some research and reading up. And, you know, one of the angles that were presented was the fact that, you know, since the COVID-19 pandemic, um, they have it, it has been really difficult for them to, of course, come out of that loss that they would have suffered and just to try to get the meat back on track. And to me, I get all of that. Things happen. You know, it's very difficult getting sponsors from time to time. But I just didn't like how messy it was done. And then, you know, we sit on this show from time to time. And I always say our job is, of course, to answer to the viewers. That's why we're here, right? Every day to, of course, be able to give the viewers um, an explanation. And, of course, the fact that we were supposed to be one of the broadcast partners, we're not able to get in touch with anybody. 
hopefully after they see this segment, we'll have one of them yeah. on. So just put some light, you know, shed some yeah. light. Let us know that, you know, at least they tried up until the last minute, but it just couldn't happen. Yeah, and the illustration of how big this meet has been over the years, the three stagings that we've seen, ESPN had covered this event before. Correct. And ESPN won't, won't cover events that are, are not major. And Correct. the fact that they've attached themselves as broadcast partners in the past tells you that the Grenada Invitational had, had risen to a, a pretty, pretty, pretty high <laughs> status in, in track and field, certainly in this side of the world, in the, in the Western hem Hemisphere. Justin Gatlin has has competed there before, which it would be one of the reasons why ESPN would want to be interested yeah. in there because um, he's a, a, a top flight US athlete and ESPN will follow the Americans. And uh, there were Americans scheduled to be at this meet in 2024. Um, but as we said, that's now history. We'll watch this um, development because uh, there is the, based on the statement, the possibility that the meet will, will never happen again. But, you know, there are times when franchises can can rebuild and resuscitate something as important as this. So the Grenada Invitational set for the 6th of June at the Kirani James Stadium in St. George's Grenada has been called off. And at the moment, we are unsure whether this event will ever happen again. This is an Olympic year and we watch the track and field space closely because athletes are getting themselves ready for Paris. Grenada won't be a part of that build up though, for sure. We go to break. We'll be back with more on the Sports Night Zone after this. Right. Um, it's an embarrassing moment for Grenada. Let's get it straight. Not just the organizers for Grenada. As a matter of fact, most people don't even know who the organizers are. Even, um, even locally, domestically, we don't know who all of the organizers are. There, there is a board. There's a committee, so to speak. We don't know who they are, but we know this affects Grenada. And, and um, as the broadcaster said, um, they, they want to speak to one of the persons involved, which I want to do as well. And um, I got information um, that came from the committee, but um, I have not spoken, and it was secondhand, but I, also, I have a setup to speak to someone um, after uh, after this program for sure, and so um, next week I'll bring you an update coming from the organizers themselves because like her, I don't like the he say she say them say right. And you know where how Simon says goes. We just like facts, right? Um, but I thought I could not could not not bring this <laughs> to you. The, the, this um, breaking news and, 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 where, and where we are today. The full release is up on, 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 on site, so you can read the entire thing coming from the organizers of the Grenada Inf Invitational. Now, this is the 50th um, anniversary of the independence, our golden jubilee, and uh, as I understand it, the NOC, had pledged support to the games and pulled out last minute. Um, this is allegedly so. Now, um, when you look at the adverts for the games, there is our 50th um, anniversary Golden Jubilee thing there at the bottom. And everyone expected it to be a part really of the celebrations, the, the year celebrations that's, that's coming up. Of, of course, the um, sports awards were supposed to be a part and that was supposed to be one of the first events somewhere in January, early January is when it's normally held and uh, um, it never happened. It never happened and it don't seem like it would happen for this year. I mean, we're halfway through the year almost and we hear nothing of the sports award. And that was supposed to be, it was on their calendar. That one was on their calendar, right? Um, I don't know, money must be done. Let's see, they're selling t-shirts. They're gone, they're, they're actually gone abroad to be selling, to, to sell memorabilia of the international probably to try and make up some change. I've seen the, um, the head of the, the chairman of the secretariat and, and, and other members um, posing in, in, in the foreign and, and saying where you can, you can get your, your, your stuff to, to purchase. So 
maybe they cock their pennies now, but we still need to know where the 22.5 million went. We still need to know, to, they need to show us the contracts, who got the contracts and how much, how much it, they, they were. All we got was two persons so far. And the lights, the stringing of the lights and the, the putting up of, of the metal. And I think they're just embarrassed to take those down right now. They're going to use Carnival as a reason to take it down. Um, the, governor, the government of Grenada had pledged support as well and uh, did not come through. A, uh, as I understand it, at 10 o'clock or 10, 10, 40 or somewhere there, anyhow, it was deep in the night. They got a call. The organizers got a call on Monday. That's Monday evening. Um, to say that they have the support um, and, uh, and, and, and the cabinet conclusion by phone. I think the call came from the, um, the CAPSEC, right? And then the horse has already bolted, was already bolted, has already bolted. And um, nothing new. They always seem to close the stable when the horse had already bolted. And, and it's, it's just a shame. And I think by then they probably realized how embarrassing it would be and how much it would affect and how many persons, people throughout the world, it will affect. And Grenada is going to get the, that bad name, Grenada, right? Um, the billion dollar uh, program, the billion dollar CBI pro, uh, that, 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 that's making all this money, they too had promised to help and pulled out. And all of that on that weekend, that last weekend of gathering, the, uh, the Grenada Lottery, the Grenada Lottery Authority did not help, right? And, and, and promised to help. And so it makes you wonder, let's listen to Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell here. Sport is a profession. The same way you have to do it day in, day out. And we are proposing that for any sportsman or woman, regardless of the category, swimming, cricket, football, netball, volleyball, tennis, that once you are training to represent the people of P.T. Martin, Kariku, and Grenada, that the state of Grenada will pay you while training, will pay you while you are, while you are traveling, to ensure that you do not have to worry about where your next meal is coming from while representing Grenada. Yeah. Now they're going to ask where the money is coming from. And I will answer this. Ask them what they are using the National Lottery's Authority money for. <laughs> so we are not talking development of sports and culture. We will do it. And so we have every intention of ensuring that the public knows in a transparent manner what the National Lotteries Authority funds are being used for. And under an NDC government, it will be sports and culture full stop. <laughs> if, if there ever was a talker, it's you, Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell. I'm sorry, I'm making no apologies for that. Talk, talk, talk. I mean, the things you said before before the election during the campaign. No, you did not want to support bringing, you paying, you promised to pay the, the, the athletes, you know. We have athletes to come home, our own, who were looking forward, they were already in adverts and looking forward to come home. Kirani James, Lyndon Victor, uh, uh, the, the javelin guy, um, I tend to forget his name all the time. Um, but, but you know who I'm speaking about, right? Uh, Anderson Peters. I've got a senior moment there. Anderson Peters, you know? And so um, what were they using the lotto monies for? What are you all using the lotto monies for? Give us the list of persons being paid now. People you're trying to hide from the system that this administration is paying monthly. We want that list. 
We want that list. There is a list. And you know I'll get it. I'll get the list. So that I'm actually working on that. No, I'll get the list. No. And you're talking about Lotto? And Lotto? Imagine that there's a part-time worker. A part-time worker you hired. And when I say you, the government, I don't know who exactly responsible. Hire that individual and pay a $5,000 a month. Something permanent workers in, in, in across the board, in better private and public, very few, very few workers are making that type of money. Permanent workers working eight to four, sometimes extra hours, you can't make that money. And you all are paying someone $5,000 through the lotto. Uh, and $5,000 for part-time work. Part-time work. In all the embarrassing comments throughout the world, I've seen, I've seen um, articles from the Glean at the Jamaica Glean. What you hear is Grenada. So whatever hang-ups you guys might have had from the uh, about the organizer or organizers of the games, whatever hang-ups you would have had, it, 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 it affects us. And that's why there need to be sit-downs. But how many of them does be around to sit down? They always gone. These games have always been supported by the government of Grenada from day one, from the very first game in 2017. Right? It has always been supported both financially and in, by concessions because they do need concessions. And to me, what I'm, what, what, when you listen to what's, what you hear in there, it's called sports tourism. We're trying to promote sports tourism, no? Right? With ESPN, Sports Mass, even NBC. The network came to Grenada. We're speaking about some 90 something million persons viewing at one time. Because, of course, ESPN, Sports Mass, NBC, right? I mean, we cannot pay. Grenada cannot pay for that advert, right? So it would only make sense that a, 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 a caring government and a visionary government uh, support something like that and put give your input. I'm not saying you support it blindly now, right? You're just going to throw money in today. But it happened for three years. It happened for three years. Now, if you look, if you look on the screen, you would see uh, two letters, right? I'm going to, I'm going to try to read snippets of one of those, right? You would see two letters from the help the government of Grenada, even one through the CBI program. And, and, and I mean, then I know they didn't make billions. Don't forget, this is the first time ever in the history of Grenada and the, the region that such monies are being made um, through the CBI program. Let me see if I can hear it on my broad screen here, right? And the, the, this is coming from a Ms. Kaisha Inks and uh, to a Ms. Sybil Alexander. And I think that um, Ms. Ms. Kaisha was the chair of the CBI board at the time, and she was alerting Ms. Sybil Alexander, who was the, dep the deputy executive director at, at the, the CBI. Now, she said the monies for the technical assistance fund were, by the way, contributed to the invitational meet in April, the two million, was transferred to the Ministry of Finance on the 1.5 
from NTF and 500,000 from projects. And then NTF is the National Transformation Fund. And uh, um, that was sent to Miss um, Sybil Alexander, up updating her on where they are. Now, the other letter concerns the concessions that was asked for and what was allowed, okay? I am sure then that the CBI program was not making the billions that we are making now, and they helped. They helped. It's not a money-making thing for the country. Likewise, when we do cricket, it's never a money-making thing, but it is sports tourism. Grenada has been advertised, and locals benefit from it. And the government, even though they don't make that money, that hard cash directly, they do make the money in taxes. And because people come home, they, they, they stay at hotels, they stay guest houses, they rent vehicles, they, they take taxi, they take the buses, they, the vendors make monies, lots of monies when we have these games and, 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 and events like that. So you don't look at it one way because indirectly the country benefits the country benefits. You're not you're not bagging. You I know it's a bag, it's a bag, bag government. We have you like to bag. Everybody wants to bag money. But it's not always, it's not always being greedy. It's, 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 it's not always beneficial. It's not always beneficial. Right? Now I'm not saying here that the government should should or should not support. I don't know behind the scenes. As I say, I will come to you next week with a proper update on this, right? But looking in from the outside, this thing has embarrassed us as a nation, right? And the, 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 the this persons, the, uh, uh, the government, um, administ the administration, and their subsidiaries that had promised help and pull out at the last minute with a week to go. You have to be blamed. You have to be blamed. I'm sorry. You can ask for checks and balances. You can, you can make sure you know where your money is being spent and what, that you can do. That is if you have people, persons in place that can do that because it doesn't seem like there's any sort of management skills amongst you. It doesn't seem so. And so with everything we do, all fall down. Everything you touch or, or, or related to it turns to dust. The games was already canceled. <laughs> when you decide, okay, we're in trouble. I don't know if you just got the go ahead from you know who while it's probably in the air somewhere, but this is not good. Last year, the games was supposed to happen, and I see people saying um, that it was launched on, on the 27th of, of um, or when, uh, you know, in a few weeks before the actual games. This thing was, has been going on for two years because there was lead up to last year when the minister, Three of sports for the minister of sports then Ron Redhead had promised the organizers that they would get the, the tracks ready in time for the games. And we all know that happened minutes before Carifta Games this year. Minutes before, really. And so, um, as a matter of fact, while the games was going on, the outer tracks was still being done. While the games has already was already started. Um and they were promised that the tracks would be ready, and it wasn't. So they had to cancel last year's meet when they realized it was, there's no way it's going to happen. And so it was a continuation of the planning. The Ministry of Sports knew about it. As I understand it, the, the now Minister of Sports did as much as he can. But the rest of it was above his pay grade. So he couldn't go any further. 
But I do understand that he helped along the, 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 with the invitational as best as he can. The minister last year, well, we, we all know he, um, he is on study leave. So we, we're going to need an update as to where he's at with this study leave. But um, <laughs> ah. back then, promises were made last year and they were not kept as well as well and therefore i can understand the frustration of the invitational committee i can understand their frustration no governance no leadership we're going nowhere fast but we lost we take a quick break and come right back thank you for tuning in to simon says to ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. Welcome back. Now I want to refresh your mind a bit on uh, the May Day celebrations which happened a month ago, roughly a month ago, at the fur the fur park in St. Patrick, in the presentation of the president of the teachers union, Mr. Jude Bartholomew. I don't want to say today that we lost confidence in the Ministry of in the Minister for Education because he's a good man. But if that continues, next year, time around, I'm gonna say it. <laughs> this was four weeks ago. Uh, my mother had to say, T don't laugh at good thing. Always. Now take a look and listen to this clip. Said on the 24th of May, just May weeks later. Uh, well, let me round it off for a month later. Let's hear him. See, in all the benefits that this administration and previous administration would have bestowed upon the teachers, upon the Grenada Union of Teachers and its members, there are still some cry and some struggles there. And that's what we're going to highlight now before we go back into other things. There is a situation there where under negotiations for this con um, contractual period, for the first time, the Grenada Union of Teachers have secured benefits for principals. That's a fringe benefit for our principals who are Grenada Carrico and Pity Martin. Let's take into consideration nobody wanted to be a principal in Grenada. We were trying to negotiate this benefit for years, even under previous administration and last administration. We did not get it. Under this administration, the NDC administration, the government and the Honorable Prime Minister gave it to us with government negotiated team for principals. But to our dismay and the principals and the duty, we are baffled from since January 2025, January, sorry, 2024, we were asking the government of Grenada, the Ministry of Education, the minister, PSCs, and other persons said that the, the principals would get their pay and, and upgrades in January. January come, they didn't get it. February, they said that the documentation and all the things already, and the money is going to pay to them. Principals waiting. They met with principals. They told them that. That didn't happen. March came, the same run around. April came, the same thing. We in May, first payment for the fortnightly payments. Up to now, the principals have not been, uh, have not received their, their payments and their upgrades. And it's, it's, it's really and truly shocking. The principals are not happy. The Grenada Union of Teachers are not happy. And, and we, we, we're trying to understand what is really taking the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Finance, so long to do what they have to do when they said that all the documents and everything has been prepared and ready to go. And I will say something here. The government of Grenada, really and truly, when they have given and been so generous, in giving the principal that benefit through negotiations. Why is it that the government of Grenada should look into this thing, the Ministry of Education, the cabinet, to make sure because the principals are not happy, they are talking about it. So when government should be celebrating 
a milestone and achievement. It means that you're going to leave our teachers and our members with sour grapes. And we are seeing here from the Grenada Union of Teachers, we have visited the Ministry of Education on several occasions, asking why personal departments. We visited also the accounts department and all the other places in the Ministry of Education. And we see there in the Ministry of Education, we want the nation to take note that it's only the, the teachers that do not have anybody basically as teachers looking after teachers' business. So who are looking after teachers' business are persons from other unions, persons who do not get that benefit because that is a fringe benefit negotiated by the Grenada um, Union of Teachers. So we are asking, what did the teachers do wrong? What did the principals do wrong? Is there some sort of jealousy and all the different things there with all the fringe benefits that the teachers are getting? And because other persons are not getting it, are they squeezing the teachers from the Ministry of Education and other places and really and truly making the government of Grenada look bad? So I'm asking the question here. I'm sure that the Honorable Deacon Mitchell and other persons from cabinet will not be happy to know that the principals and other persons who serve and do what basically they have to do for education in this country and knowing that they are struggling to get a benefit. So you believe, Jude, that the prime minister don't know that this, the teachers, the principals didn't get that money. You believe, Jude, that the Minister of Finance, Honorable Dennis Conwell, don't know that the teachers didn't get that money. You believe, Jude, that the Minister of Education, who's a good man, you believe he don't know that the principals didn't get that money. They probably just don't have the money. <laughs> Things bad. Things bad everywhere. It bad. E bad. E bad outside and e bad inside. E bad. Right? So we see where he headed. Let's get the next clip. We were shocked in a, a hasty call meeting just before conference, duty conference 2024. We were shocked. When we heard um, higher persons in the Ministry of Education in the meeting with us said to us that there was a cabinet um, conclusion under the previous administration to put a hole or something like that so to review the payment of um, or the in, um, in the inducement allowance for teachers with their masters for years under the previous administration nobody said anything. What is so shocking? And really and truly is deceitful is that the persons who say that to us now, they were persons in the Ministry of Education under the previous administration. Some of them were CEOs, some of them are PSs now. The Minister for Education was even under the previous administration, and nobody said that to us. Don't tell me that they're just aware that under the previous administration there were a whole and cabinet conclusion. And what is even more humiliating is that they said that the previous administration asked them to assess it, to review it, and to report back to cabinet under the previous administration, and they never did it. And this is what is so unfair and unfortunate. These teachers of Grenada, Karakou, and Piti Matnik, who are making so much sacrifices to the nation, we spend the nation, the teachers, Jews, on sports, national primary school games, intercal games, um, cricket, netball, football, up on um, children. We make that sacrifice and commitment. Teachers spend their monies upon the nation. And when it comes now to the benefit that the teacher is supposed to get, somehow in the Ministry of Education, they are squeezing the teachers. And the teachers frustrated because we voted for change. The teachers never voted for those sort of things that come in upon them now with frustration from the Ministry of Education. These are the things that we got from the, the previous administration. And we come in and get it now, even worse. And what we're saying is that, and we observe, is that the, this um, administration, new administration, is an administration that is pure labor, pure workers. They're not anti-worker. They're not anti-teacher. So I'm positively sure that the Honorable Deacon Mitchell and some of his cabinet members would not basically be happy with what they are hearing because they don't want that. I know the government, the prime minister want peace. 
He wants um, industrial harmony and everything in the nation. Minister, uh, President Jude seemed to be the only union leader that know that, that, that this administration is worker friendly. But what I really want to know is when did he get all this information, the ones about the principal, the ones about the, the, the teachers that have grade themselves, all this information, he just got this after May Day. Or that's what he was talking about, that he would come to them next year with, with the hope that everything would sort out itself before next year. But I wonder what caused him to be in this state he in now, what caused it? But let, let's move on. Let's move on there more. And what is hurting and insulting? The very high persons of the Ministry of Education, the duty fought for them to get their monies. We had to struggle, and we don't, I don't want to call them there, but the persons we negotiating for the Ministry of Education, we had to remind them that we fought for them to get their monies, and they got thousands of dollars on the retroactive payment. Now they are, and some of them were in the union at that time, now they are in that position. We had to be kind and begging these people to give to this, these teachers what they got for themselves. And it's unfair and unfortunate. And we are saying to the nation, no, our citizens of Grenada. What we observe, there's a lot of benefits for teachers, but for some home, and we heard it in DPA, we asked DPA, we said, why is it that the teachers are not getting some of the benefits that they're supposed to get as fringe benefits? And they told out plain out. They say, Mr. President and other persons who were there, that the other persons from the public service and other unions or other places, whether in the Ministry of Education and other places, they are not getting some of these benefits too. So as a result of that, they don't want to give the teachers. But we have different unions. If other workers want these sort of benefits and they cannot get the same because teaching is a different category of working, they, they have to negotiate under their union for their benefits. So if they, we fight for it and we get it, you can squeeze the teachers and squeezing the teachers and creating stress and problem for our teachers. Did you hear him say he spoke, they spoke to DPA and does the... the, the and DPA told them that the workers are squeezing the teachers because they're not getting that benefit as, as well. Did you hear this guy say that? Even if DPA told him that, he's the president of a, of a union, right? He's a public, did you hear him? Okay, so you know how Simon says what? I sought out the DPA and I spoke to someone of a very high level. It might be the highest level within that ministry or department, so to speak. They have no idea what Mr. Bartholomew is speaking of. They never had such a conversation with Mr. Bartholomew. What was said, in fact, is that they don't know if some one individual who's trying to be malicious, I am saying that, huh? the malicious part, because they said that maybe one individual, they don't know that for a fact either, might have spoken to him, and he, he, that probably works with DPA, and he just said DPA. But as to say, sat down with the persons in DPA, the PS and the uh, the, the, the SOA and, and those people that never happened where they, he was told that workers are, are squeezing and penalizing the teachers that never happened right and I am saying if someone would have told him that it could have been a, a malicious a malicious supporter that's what they do they do that best right but to call to go on live television public television and to make such a statement is either he's not well or he's plain nasty and 
to be the, the, the president and the leaders of our teachers of this nation, it's not a good look. It, it, it's really not a good look. And right there, Mr. Bottoli, you gave me a janja. Making up story, sensationalism. Moving along. Moving along. Let's hear Mr. Bartholomew as he continues. The situation here. After we would have gone through this thing for years under the previous administration, we see this thing done in every other ministries. All the workers getting paid the same month that they start to work is only in the Ministry of Education. And we're asking the Honorable David Andrew, why are we going back to the same problems that we're having under the Ministry of Education? When we have a new administration that say we're going forward in transformation, and I know the government would not feel pleased about that because there is no shortage of money in the country. The Prime Minister never announced that he doesn't have money and one month he cannot pay teachers. Every month they, they pay in a lot of workers on time. And so that is not the issue here. It means that if the government does not do the due diligence, it means that something slacks somewhere. And whoever is not doing their work is making this new administration look bad. And if this government doesn't want to fix that, then they're going to end up in an unfortunate and unnecessary problems by the basically workers or persons in her position not doing what they are supposed to do and putting a confrontation between the teachers and, and the Grenada Union of Teachers and this administration, and they better take a look of it. There are some teachers who are crying tears. Six months now, we are in January, we, from since January, we're in May and they don't get paid as yet. For five months, these teachers have not gotten paid. A lot of teachers, women, they are crying, and that happening now. When we had an engagement with the Minister for Education, he said, this thing will change. One thing we could say under the previous administration, under the Honorable Emily Pierre, she tried to fix it. She cut down the time and which teachers are getting paid. We said that this problem will come to an end because it's not to say there is a shortage of money or anything. It just means that the persons in the Ministry of Education and other places are not doing what they're supposed to do on time. And they are making the new administration look bad. And the new administration must do what they have to do to change this thing because they're getting a bad name and they might pay the consequences of it. Coal coming out fresh, coal coming out in a teacher knows for all this time they can't get paid. They have their family. When teachers complain to you, they're telling you the bank, the credit union calling them, they feeling shame. Five months they can't get paid. Bank writing them, how oh, that could be fair? When the same people who are making up the claims and documents in the Ministry of Education, Finance, and other places, they ensuring that they get their money and time, they're taking care of their families. While you have teachers struggling, and we say no to that, and we ask them, this is a serious matter. Let this month of be be the last time for this administration going forward that teachers have to be complaining over and over again that they're taking three, four, five, and six months to get paid. Enough is enough, and those things should stop. Because we know the intention of this government is good, but for somehow, it looks as in the different ministries, I don't want to say sabotage, I don't want to say whatever is happening, but some screw slack some way, and the government must do what they have to do so that uh, they could better those things. So we're calling on them to fix the same, the, the same problem with um, our, our, our salary slip. Over a year now, we can't get our salary slip. Just before conference, we spoke about it. Some more teachers got it. This is against the law. you telling me you're paying the nation teachers. You're paying them the money, so no problem in there. But they're not getting their salary slip. There is an issue there. One teacher called one morning to me very early, and she started crying. She said, Mr. President, I have not received my salary slip for a long time. And look what has happened. I have my insurance with an insurance company. I cannot see my salary slip. The Ministry of Education was supposed to take out the, the deduction and pay the money to the insurance company. For a long time, she didn't have a salary slip. She couldn't see what was happening. She never knew. They wrote her no one saying she owed for over a year of what it is to be. And now she has to pay all that money. Whose fault it is? Whose fault it is, and therefore the significance of the importance of giving workers the salary slip so that you can watch and you can see if you are short paid. We had salary increase. A lot of teachers don't know if they are short paid. They're not to show if they get the right amount of money. They're not to show what deductions are because they're not getting the salary slip. Those things are little problems that should not be had. Did I hear you say it's against the law? <laughs> we'll take a quick break and come back. Thank you 
for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon. See you at the next episode. What teacher Jude failed to realize? Fantasy Island is not a real place. So all the fantasies that was put out there to them, there is reality to it. And so we are now understanding that certain things that happened previously, and we we'll go back 20, 2008, come forward. That's where reality hits home. And everything is not going to happen just because the teachers say, and the teachers say, right? And that the minister now and the minister then, they're human beings and the workers are human beings. I don't know how you know the government have money, but you say they have. So probably you have information that the rest of us don't have. And they, so the workers you blaming, that they don't, they're just not paying it. And even with the complaints, the powers that be, they're not taking care of it because you're complaining, teachers crying, snorting their nose. Hmm? And, and, and nothing, nothing happened, happening. And you still blaming the workers because the, 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 this government is a good government. We have the best government and we have the best Mitchell. Can't get better than that, right? You continue to separate the prime minister and his ministers of cabinet from the workers and the blame continue to be, to be put on the workers. So what goes on in cabinet meetings? The Minister of Education don't report what well, this is where we are and we, we, we pay or we and pay the teachers the money that they do to them. The Minister of Finance is there. Minister of Finance can say, well, we have them, we didn't have the money or we have the, what happens within the cabinet? Something, reports have to be made. PS's report to the, to, the, to the politicians, the politicians sit in cabinet and they discuss, right? So that's not happening. Well, we don't know if there's a cabinet meetings. I shouldn't, I shouldn't go there, you know, because we don't get reports from cabinet. So we don't know what happens in there. And, and I know that there are, are some disgruntled people in there at the moment, but other than that, I don't know what happened. But how is it okay for a union leader to be openly partisan when, you, when you're the leader for all the workers? Red, yellow, green, purple, blue, whatever the color. How is it that it's okay for you to be openly partisan? Bashing workers of another union. And I am, and, and, and I mean, you didn't say it, but the presumption is there. NNP, NNP workers. And, and you wouldn't say sabotage, but you said it. Why did you say you wouldn't say sabotage? That fellow is, that's a good calypso right there. <laughs> a good line for a calypso. Those of you penning now. Right? How unethical. How unethical. What ha ever happened to union solidar in solidarity with each other? This is the first time in my adult life that I am hearing and seeing this type of behavior coming out from a union leader publicly tearing down another union's workers and it seems as though it's a vendetta 
I said it before, and I'm saying it again, the teachers need to remove this guy as their leader. But not only the union leader can be accused of such. Well, it's not an accusation because it was, it's, it's, uh, he said it out there plain in our face. And so did a couple of ministers. Let's hear Minister Connor. I'm saying that. From the Ministry of Finance standpoint, we want to encourage the finance officers in the various ministries and departments. Do your work and do it on time. If you know something has to happen, don't wait until the 19th hour and then push the blame on the Ministry of Finance. Because we have an obligation to verify the information, make sure it is cross-checked before we can print a check. But if, for example, a staff member has an increase in salary to get, and it's coming from the Ministry of, let's say, X or Y, and it gets to the Treasury and so on, and that, that increase is not on top of 10 so on, the person may get a short payment. But it's not the Ministry of Finance that pay you short. It's what we get from your ministry and so on, and we verified it. We paid it. So I'm appealing to our finance officers or permanent secretaries who are the so-called um, persons that need to make sure they verify that everything that goes from the ministry to the Ministry of Finance is done properly and is without errors. And those persons who are still um, out there skylarking, I would say, because you need to make sure that you do your work. And if you didn't do your work on time, don't blame the, 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 the ministry at the end of it because so many times I've been calling my peers and the accountant general to verify this and verify that. Sometimes it's not really in the treasury as yet. Yeah, because in December, I know you had issues with some individuals complaining that they did not get their wages on time. Yes, it's but simply, just, just imagine. You're saying it's simply because officers did not complete their paperwork in time well, for processing. Yes, but again, I must say that um, the stacks of people that is involved, especially, for example, the Bushin people, and I believe that we have to find a way at um, addressing that problem because, I mean, it's just too much people. Mm -hmm. And if you have little or no time to basically process all the people, some things will, will fall to the crap. So as we go forward, we have to find a way of digitalizing those things. If we give the people in the field and so on a little laptop or something or iPad to basically enter the information that can interact with the system directly to make it much more easier. But I would not say that is an easy process. A lot of work. Imagine, for example, people expect to get paid for the Christmas twenty fifth and so on. But imagine people woke up to the twenty second and twenty third. Now, why did Minister Cornwall came on bashing the workers, destroying their moral, his team, his workers, and then after that? telling us what the real problem is. And the real problem is these workers worked, they did this once a month, right? Once a month. So yes, no one then they might have paid late, but for the most part, workers got paid on time and has been getting paid on time. But because they have to do the same thing twice a month now, the same people, no extra, have to do it twice a month that there lies the problem. Their bi-weekly payment, bi-monthly, it's called sometimes, it's bi-weekly, I think it's one of the same. That is the problem. And so say it and do not blame the workers. You're speaking on both sides of your mouth. But then again, yeah. But our Minister of Labor, she too went off on the workers. Let's hear her. Labor Minister Senator Claudia Joseph, during a recent NDC Heartbeat program, addressed concerns over late payments of salaries to public officers. According to Joseph, the delays are not due to financial constraints, but rather inefficiencies within the public service. So what I would like to say to um, the leadership of the trade union movement is that, and it's a matter that came up, it's a matter that came up during the minimum wages consultation, the question of productivity and giving a fair day's work for a fair day's pay. Because the fact is that we do not have 
an issue of, of resources or finances with which to meet government's monthly commitment. We do not have an issue of resources or finances with which to implement the budgetary measure. Joseph urged union leaders to encourage their members to execute their duties in a prompt and effective manner. So we are depending on and we are we are expecting the functionaries, the officers to do their jobs and to do so in a timely and diligent manner so that what has to be done will be done um, and people are not prejudiced or people are not disadvantaged. I encourage the leadership of the union to impress on their members to be diligent and timely in what they have to do. And we wouldn't have these issues, we wouldn't have these companies. So, <laughs> no matter how we try, no matter how they try to blame the workers, folks, they cannot be blamed. They cannot be blamed without some of the blame falling in the laps of the powers that be. The, the, the ones at the top, the policy makers. It's a total rat race. It's a total rat race. Prime Minister Deacon Mitchell is the boss. He's in charge and makes it quite clear. He's the only actor in the movie. The fish rots from the head. He is very much a part of the deception the mama guy and the tomfoolery that is going on. These guys do not know how a government works. They need to go learn about governance. Unfortunately, we as a people, Grenada, Karaku, and Pity Magni, we don't have that time to waste. We need to be moving on. We don't have that time. The honeymoon is over. It's been over. But this is cut off period now. And so we need to see some semblance of, 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 of some sort of planning, some sort of vision, some, some, some sort of structure in place moving forward from here on. Or as Barry Salmon says, this is no disrespect. This is no disrespect. Step aside now. You guys don't know and you don't care to know. It seems like you, you, you haven't gotten familiar with the public service rules, not the rules of the parliament not a constitution, not an integrity in public life act. I mean, it's like you just come in there and everything is the same. Most of you didn't even have a job. And for all of you, this is your first time in governing a country. So you need to learn, there's nothing wrong. You had leads. Well, I think the leads was the same as y'all anyway. They, they did know better themselves. Even some of them might have been in government before. And I say all of this to say, we have a minister now selling branded T-shirts. And if you look on your screen, you'll see the flyer. He's selling branded T-shirts. This here is against the law, according to the Integrity Public Life Act, Section 40, 41, and 42. All of that will be up on the side. You can go, you can look at it, and you can read it through. There is a code of conduct. The code of conduct is the sixth schedule of the Integrity in Public Life Act number 24 of 2013 and it provides guidance for person in public life in their performance of their duties for example 
a person in public life must be politically neutral in the conduct of their duties. Two, they must be honest. They must be honest, impartial, and efficient and perform their duties in the public's best interest, not in your interest or your brother or your sister or your nene or your auntie's interest, in the public's interest or else move from there. They must not allow their private interest to be in conflict with the public duties. Well, that's a joke when it comes to this administration. Conflict of interest is normalcy. And if we listen to this here, absolutely none, absolutely none of them supposed to be in office. They must not use their public positions hey, for personal or private gain. Let me read this one again. They must not use their public positions for personal or private gain. That's a joke for them. They must always conduct themselves in a way that boosts public confidence and trust in integrity, impartiality, and effectiveness of the public service. Now, the morale of the public, of Grenadians, of the public workers, the police, the nurses, is so low, it can't be any. There is no one in there that boosts, that can boost or have been boosting public confidence and even members of their political party are feeling demoralized, are embarrassed, are unhappy with what they're seeing. Yeah, we know the ones who have their hand, their head in the sand and their butt in the air forever and wouldn't remove it, wouldn't even come up for air because they don't want to see what's going on. So they stick their head there and they remain there. They must maintain confidentiality at all times. Those duties wipe out almost all, in my opinion, almost all of the members of our cabinet. If a person in public life believes that someone is asking them to do something that is unlawful, unethical, or improper, they should report it to the relevant authorities. Remember, integrity means doing the right thing, even when no one is looking. They don't care about who's looking. They doing it in open air, bright daylight, blatant as hell. All the wrongs. And as teacher Jude said, it's worse now. I don't think he knew he said that, you know. I don't think he knew he said that. The complete code of conduct is up there and you can go through and read. And, 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 and as you read, think about what is going on now. Think about what's happening today as we speak in Grenada. They are making a set of ad hoc decisions just to tick boxes and they are falling apart at their seams. Free tuition all the way up to Tam CC. Tam CC is now complaining that there's low attendance, that there's a low attendance rate and we wonder why. Yes, you get your tuition pay, but how you get in from Rose Hill in St. Patrick to Tantine, or how you get in from Tivoli 
to Tantin. Or from Bolio to Tantin. If you don't have the money for transportation, you just don't have the money. And so when the ministers went to, was in parliament and knocked table at the free tuition right up to Tam CC, including Nulo, and didn't think about what would happen, where they get shoes to put in their feet, the vulnerable ones, and money to pay transportation. And they said that is the largest registration of, 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 of students that CC ever had. Now, they're complaining of low attendance. And what the former administration was saying to them in the parliament, the opposition was saying to them, that those who can pay, let them pay. And the vulnerable ones, give them full scholarship, tuition, transportation, food allowances. Have some of them on the seed program. I met a lady who told me her son is in, 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 in secondary school. They used to get 350 through the seed program. Now they're getting $100. She's not well. She's a farmer. She's not well. Can't farm as she would like to. Of course, farming don't really have money these days either. Right? And sometimes you have to struggle to go to the stadium to collect that $100. Because if you miss some month, when you go next month, you're not getting $200. You're getting the $100 for the month that you came. The one that gone, it's gone. Right? And it's not enough. It's not enough. The, the, um, the, Flo and the government, when they, when they launched their internet thing, and they said they were going to pay internet for, they were going to give the, the, the vulnerable free internet. They were only going to pay $20. Never happened. So whatever she was paying, I think it's a hundred and, and, and 20 or, or something dollars. That's what she still has to pay. And you can't say not paying it. The kids need the internet to do their work. That's their homework and so. Speaking of food, the school feeding program. Schools were told not to collect the dollar in the primary school and the three dollars in the secondary school from those who can afford to do it. That monies were back up. So if you run out of vegetables, if you run out of meat or milk, that money is you can run down the road in the closest store, the closest corner shop, or the supermarket, and purchase what you need. No, they don't have that privilege. They have to wait on the government to send the food, how they send it monthly, and 90% of the time it's not enough. But you're given free school, uh, food and you can't afford it. And here now, you come in, free tuition, free school book, free school, um, feeding, school feeding program, everything. For what? So you can put on your, your achievement list when you have not achieved nothing. The word I want to use, you have not achieved zit because it's a hot mess. Principals and teachers are complaining. So if they don't have the food, what happens? The teachers and principals have to dip their hand in their pockets. And as I understand it from some of the schools, some of the parents that they can afford still has been chomping up, giving monies, or else the children would starve. There are schools that give kids breakfast as well. Kids come to school without breakfast. They're hungry. You cannot study on a hungry brain. So they do breakfast and lunch to give them a hot meal. The only hot meal some of them might have for the day. Right? But you have free school feeding program. And for the most part, the kids, there's no food for the kids. 
and they, they, it was also a way of making sure that the kids eat healthy so they get the vegetables and meat the fish the... no more ramen some schools are giving their kids I mean, come on, come on. But we check in boxes. We check in boxes. Free school feeding program. Free tuition. Let's go, let's check. No child must be left behind. Universal education. The schools are not retrofitted for universal education. Material-wise, equipment-wise, teacher-wise, in some instances. And so when we take all, everybody must go, and we pell them in the secondary school, and they're not academically inclined, they're still left behind. And what happens in some cases? They drop out. In the primary school, I think they have, well, in my time, you had three tries at the common entrance or the CPA, as it's being called now. And so you may not be ready the first time, but did they have teachers? And they are the teachers in the in the in the schools. They work with this, the 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 um, children for the most part, and you can help. And by the time you get to probably a second try or maybe a third, you probably will be in a better place to enter a secondary school. But to take you, I mean, it doesn't even make the children want to, with the effort, some of them, because you know what, whether I pass or not, I'm going to secondary school. So why put that extra pressure on myself? You know? And so you pull them all in there and they get left behind, they're disruptive, and some of them drop out. And instead of leaving them behind at the school, they're now at the side of the street, under the mango tree. And what happens? Guns in their hands, cutlass. They go, they rob the neighbors, they rob the store down the This is where we act today, but especially our young men and crime and violence. And that's what we're doing there with this universal uh, 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 education is fueling that behavior. New law, new law, free, free tuition. <laughs> I'm going to read a flyer that new law put out quickly here to you guys, because if you don't have a, a child in school in Nulo, you may not know of this flyer. And this was put out, updated in May, 2024. And it says registration fee. These are what they're giving to the parents, guardians and children. So they know what they have to come up with, what they have to pay. But remember, free tuition, registration fee $60, plus a passport size picture, recommendation letter from the last school you attend, and the original and photocopy of your birth paper. Nulo polo shirt, $55 for one to be purchased at the center. Trainees sew their own pants and shirts. Tuition fees is $250, $250 per term paid by the government. You hear how much it is? $250. Paid by the government of Grenada. If you're attending NULO for the first time and you are a Grenadian or a resident in Grenada, $250, right? The CVQ certificate fee is $450 right so you get your tuition paid but you can't pay for the cvq certificate fee because that's 450. residents community fee 50 dollars every week 
accommodation and feeding from Monday to Friday at Palmy St. John. Computer engineer exam fees. Call 415 and 8351 for details. So there's a fee there as well. Small personnel tools and supplies for practicing for practical training. You purchase what you need. So the parents have to purchase that. Soft skill courses such as hospitality arts, early childhood, uh, geriatric care, cosmetology, and fashion designing have special industry uniforms. You have to get your uniforms. Hard skill courses such as green, uh, general construction, carpentry, furniture making, electrical plumbing, refrigeration, and AC solar insulation require trainees to have construction boots instead of regular shoes, even when they are at the life skills stage. Now, all those, again, what the opposition was saying, let who can pay, pay, and the persons who cannot afford, you give them full scholarship, so they would get their CVQ, um, uh, the monies for that paid, they would get transportation, they would get all their uni, they would get that. But if you get your, your, your 250 paid by the government, and you don't have any of those things that you look at or that you need to get in addition. Waste of time. You, you, can't, you can't attend school. I mean, yes, you, you try to do something there. It's not working out. You're getting an advice of how it worked before. Yes, somebody say it might have been perfect. There might have been hiccups as well, but it was better than this thing. Because right now, kids are not going to school. And Nula only put that out because of the issues they, they have been having with students not being able to afford. Eh? Hot mess. I could hardly wait to see the achievement list this, this time around. I could hardly wait to see. Now, I told you of the of the um the, the single mother and the issues she was having. This is not just to her. This is something that is happening throughout the island. Even the minister and they I saw posting, you know how they like to pose and post. And I don't even think he realized what he did. But he so wanted to talk about the Muslim guy who gave him $200 that he forgot what he said initially that he got this he saw these missed calls on his phone so many and when he called back it was a mother at the end of the other line crying and saying how she have no food to feed her kids she has nothing no monies and she has no food to feed her kids and that things are so bad and that is the reality I care how much billion dollars. I care what the IMF say, as the Prime Minister say. We are dealing with IMF. I don't care what the IMF say. I don't care who say what is what you feel in your gut at the, uh, when the day comes and your kids. And when you can't feed your child and children, is what matters. And when you watch the streets outside, how oh, empty. I sat in the market. On, on Monday, for an hour and a half. For an hour and a half. And watch as the vendors sat there with their hands under their chin. And all the produce and different things, their spices and so, in front of them. People not even walking through the marketplace. Much less the purchase. And they pass, if one or two persons pass, sometimes it looks as though it's a shortcut from the, the street. Um, I don't know the names of the street, I'm sorry, to, to, to come across if you're going like by Purcell and they're coming down the other side by the Chinese mall, hmm? the Syrian mall, sorry. And they think, and they just pass through and they're gone. One hour and a half I spent sitting there. Yeah. So, Ibad 
And until you all come to the, the realization and accept that is bad, accept help from people and persons who've been through it and take advice. I know when they talk of anybody talk, that's when you all clump up self and nobody tell me not who. And you're involved with, with, with them. Because it's all about you. It's not about you. It's about the people. Do something about the internet. $109 it is, yeah. That 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 she's paying now. And it's not just her, uh, all those who were who were um who were offered a set of talk, a set of big talk, nothing in place. There was no planning, there was no structure, there was nothing on paper. It's just talk and it sounds good. And we move on to the next talk. Now that's what you have to talk about, Mr. Jude Bartholomew. The school feeding program that is in a mess, this free tuition full stop. And the vulnerable parents out there who cannot afford to send their children to school. That's what I want to hear you making confusion about. I'm joining you in the back of now. If it ain't broken, don't fix it. Don't fix it. Because now you try to fix what's not broken and you make a whole mess out of it. Now let's talk about a gentleman by the name of Mr. Jerry Eno. I did a program already. It wasn't just him, it was, um, I named a few of them who got contracts from the Ministry of Agriculture. He had a ministry, right? Agriculture. Now he is the living boyfriend, the lover of Minister for Climate Resilience, the Environment and Renewable Energy, Minister Kareen James. Mr. Eno is on the payroll of the St. George's University he works in the housing department. I was told my information, I, 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 I did make my calls. He is also on the solid waste board. Mr. Jerry Eno had been traveling with his girlfriend, Minister Kareen James, from the get-go. On their coming in to office in June, 2022, now, persons started buzzing about his travels, and um, we were never told he was in the entourage. We were only we would see photos and get a glimpse of Mr. Eno. Now, on the night of August 2023, an agreement was um, signed between Mr. Eno of Dr. Bell, Mr. Jerry Eno, let me take that over, Mr. Jerry Eno of Dr. Bell Gwarf in the parish of St. John, hereafter called the contractor and the government of Grenada, represented by the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, hereafter called the government. It's an 11 page contract document, so, you can enjoy the reading of it um, on there, but I would read to you a snippet of my glasses again, of Mr. Eno's contract agreement. This agreement is made on the 9th of August in the year 2023 between the government of Grenada represented by the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Agriculture and Lands, hereinafter and after called the government of the one part and Mr. Jerry German Eno of Dr. Bell Gwarf in the parish of St. John, hereinafter and after called the contractor of the one other part, collectively the parties. 
Whereas the government of Grenada has determined that there is the need to procure certain services for its proper functioning. And whereas it has further rep represented by the contractor that he is an individual who has the qualifications and the ability to deliver the required services. We were not told the qualification. He told them that he's qualified according to this and they said, yes, he's qualified. Nature of service, subject to the terms and conditions of this agreement, the government shall engage the contractor to provide the services set out in the terms of reference, schedule one to this agreement and incorporate herein by this reference which services may be referred to herein as the services hereunder. Term of agreement, the engagement of the contractor shall commence on June the 1st, 2023. So, you know, we retroact, we must go back and pay them some more money. Um, and for a period of one year, and may be determined in accordance with clause seven below the engagement may only be extended beyond the terms set out above upon separate written agreement with the parties. Well, that's no big deal. I'm just going to read for you the fees in consideration for the delivery of the service set out in schedule. I, the government, shall pay the contractor the sum of EC dollars, $62,200, dollars per annum to be paid at the end of every month for services rendered and um the previous amount now um i mr eno's monthly it's five five thousand um five thousand one hundred dollars right this agreement was signed by the permanent secretary of the Ministry of Agriculture Lands on the behalf of the government of Grenada and Mr. Jerry Eno and with two witnesses present. So Mr. Eno's uh, monthly salary is $5,100 monthly from the Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Eno has no desk in the Ministry of Agriculture. Mr. Eno, as I was told, um, in my investigation, only shows up in the Ministry of Agriculture when his money is late in, in entering his bank account and he travel and goes to the ministry to find out what's going on, where's his money. He has no connection with the Ministry of Agriculture. Um, but he travels with his girlfriend to do deal with the environment and that, that ministry there, along with the Prime Minister. Um, the uh, Prime Minister accompanied that delegation to um, Antigua uh, from the 25th of May and um, I think to the 30th. I think they left on the 25th or the 26th. This, the, the, the conference was from the 27th to the 30th of May 2024. And Mr. Eno is seen sitting at the table with his lover and the prime minister in meetings. He is there. If you look on the screen, you'll see the gentleman with the blonde locks come down his chest. That is Mr. Eno. You would see the photos. You see him everywhere. Merrily, 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 merrily. Um, sister, sister Gloria, merrily, merrily, merrily. Let's have a good time. As I understand it, it is alleged that, um, Mr. Eno and his lover um, ran up a bill of 30,000 US, uh, I think with the extended family, Mommy Darison, who was also there in Dubai. Spending our money, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, this is the type of thing that we have to wonder. Now, we can't separate the prime minister from that one. He's sitting at the table with Mr. Eno. This morning, I saw I saw um, a, a, a release which says Mr. Eno is the um, advisor to the Prime Minister on the blue economy. Now, that ministry 
Yes, so this ministry has um, members like Dr. Spencer Thomas, a veteran in that field, and, and, and uh, Mr. Leslie Smith, and Mr. Leon Charles, and Mrs. Aria Grenadine St. Louis. These people have been working and, and, and have reserves to show. We have gotten monies. Look at where Simon Steele is today. Who held him up? as minister, the, that team, and others. But we have to hire our own conflict of interest. Mr. Jerry Eno, the, the, the minister's boyfriend, her living lover, to travel with her everywhere. To, oh, what else are they doing with honeymoon? What do you think? Because you say you're going on business, you think they could just what sleep in separate rooms, we're busy, we're doing our work, we don't have that. Oh, really? And how the bills are so high, folks. This is kukute. This is play play. This is play play. Both the, the prime minister and the minister, um, Kareem James, had um clips put out where they speak of the delegations and what's going on in none of them mention none of them mention mr jerry Eno. none of them but you can't miss him you can't miss him in the photos having a grand time in the photos somebody someone else can do the work that Mr. Eno is doing. If, in fact, he's doing some kind of work, advising the prime minister. Someone else can do that. And the prime minister turns a blind eye to things like that. He encourages things like that. And I could, I have a list I can call out. In an in, in interest of time, I wouldn't even play the clips. I have them to play, but we are quickly running out of time. It must be known that my investigation into Mr. Jerry Eno's contract, and I'm saying it again, his contract to with the Ministry of Agriculture, in my mind, is a form of trickery, it's conflict of interest, and borderline corruption. While some of agriculture, what's really going on in, the, in that ministry? We, um, as I understand it, the permanent secretary is a flower pot. And the real, the ministry, the, the, the permanent secretary is Ms. Gemma Bain Thomas. I mean, we need to do something about what's going on. We, we really, really need to clamp down on, on those things. Well, only last evening, um, Folks, the health issues are getting worse. Still no reagents to conduct basic blood tests. Patients have had to go to private entities, private laboratories throughout the island to get blood tests done. Ultrasound also have, now that they're back, they said there's a backup and persons in emergency instances cannot get their ultrasounds done. They have to go to, um, uh, private entities. One person complained to me that they went, got a, a um, ultrasound, and it was it was not it was faulty because what the doctors sent to do that they something else came back. It was faulty, plain talk, and so they had to get another one done. That is a hundred and fifty dollars twice. Um, more recently. Um, patients that are scheduled for surgical procedures were told they um, cannot be accommodated. Only emergencies are, uh, well, I guess, real emergencies, because if you schedule for surgery, I in, in itself, I take that as an emergency. And so 
Only certain surgeries are being done at the moment of there at the general hospital. Um, in the meantime, our Minister of Health took a month off for private business. We all know that he's, um, he has started his full farm. I understand containers of his chicks has arrived on the port sometime um, in the last week. And, um, but I want you all that this would happen, that we wouldn't, sooner than later, we wouldn't have a Minister of Health. Well, I think Mr. my boy Ali getting in there. He's posing yesterday up at the hospital with some workers. He just made a visit to the, you know, and he's acting minister of, um, acting prime minister. I'm not sure if this rounds. He's acting minister because the minister of health is away again, huh? He's away, yes. Um, they don't stay on, on ground long, you know. They, they most times in transit. So, um, yeah. So we have a ministry of health that is, again, on its own, and, and these days has hit rock bottom. And health is no joke. This is a government, an administration that planned to put health on their front burner. But we know about the talk, 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 talk. And, and, and fantasy island is, is not a real place. So that's what that, that's how we are, where we are today. What is going on with the housing, low income housing project? They're still empty, ribbon cut twice, Chinese handover keys twice, and they're still empty. Please give us an update. When we spoke here on Simon Says of the housing, um, what, two days later, they were handing over keys and cutting ribbons. And I thought, wow, that's great. Let's get it going. That was it. Where are we with primary health care? Another knee jerk reaction after hearing, I spoke of the the, the nurse who died from coming from St. Patrick to St. George with an emergency, and we have two proper polyclinics between that, one in St. Mark and one in St. John, not operating efficiently as they should. We need to know where, where are we with primary health care. And primary health care was launched by the then minister, Lacret in St. John. That's the first and the last we heard of it, the launch in St. John. Uh, added to the 22 million US dollars that was given to um, Mr. Warren Newfield, how much more monies was spent on the Kawana Bay project, how much monies was spent and given and paid back to the investors, or uh, 200 and something of them plus, we need to know the total amount of money that was spent on the Kawana Bay project. Now that we have handed it over, we have swapped it for the Rivera project on the beach. Um, we need to know if we made monies there in, in, in that transaction. There is a figure that is involved with that Kawana Bay project before, during, and after. When is the WASH program going to be reinstated? Um, the, call it what you want, the bathroom and toilet program, there were those who are complaining now that they were on the list before this administration take office or took office. And um, they, one lady told me that she was called and she felt so happy that they actually was going to deal with the list from before. They told that they were coming when to start and they never showed up. And that was more than a year ago. Where are we with the John T. murder case? We went still on that. What we know is that someone was um, uh, accused and charged of the murder, went out, went on bail, and we heard nothing of that again. It's probably happening behind the scenes, but we haven't heard. Can someone give us an update? on the John T. murder case, asking for, um, asking for police officers whose monies was removed from their salary at the end of the month, like this month here, without no notification. Um, no one said anything before, no after, and all of them quiet and they're afraid to ask, well, what happened? How did they, why they removed the money? They got their promotions and the monies were there and they were getting their monies, and all of a sudden, as a Grenadian, we say, all at a sudden, 
this end of the month, the money's dropped off. And they would like to know, tell them something, why and where the money gone. To the NDC, isn't it true that after 2018 election, it took you 20 months, 24 months is two years, right? It took you 20 months to call a convention held on the 3rd of November, 2019, when Franco Bernadine was given the leadership of the party on conditions. No one's supposed to go up against her. She's going to get it on a platter, zip, nothing. You all, the Democratic Party, gave it to her. And, by the way, knowing that she didn't fit the position. And I ain't, I ain't going to explain why I know that, but I was told so. When I, although I was, I'd already resigned, and I saw that, I made some calls to some persons. And I said, what? Are you all serious? Well, we don't have anybody else, and we need to hold a convention, so we're going to give her. We know it wouldn't last. Um, been six months, she won't give it up. It didn't happen. I said to them then, I said, that's not the Franco Benedict I know. However, it didn't happen. What they did, they tormented her until, and, and well, she didn't resign. And I know that she would not have resigned even with the torment, but they made a deal. So when they came out in the press conference and said she was sick and she said the doctor tell her if she continues, she's going to die. Not true. That too was a lie. And y'all know that. So when you're getting into people's business, mind your own own first. Mind your own first. And is it true, the next convention after that 2019 one was held in 2021, two years later, two years later, when the party was again handed and handed to Deacon Mitchell. If I do my maths correct, it's two years from 2019 to 2021. So November 2019 to October 2021. And wasn't the leadership of the party handed to Deacon Mitchell. Folks, that's a wrap on today's episode of Simon Says. It's always a pleasure conversing with you, keeping them honest. Thank you for joining us and Simon Says for yet another episode where facts come first. See you next week, same time, same place. Bye now. Thank you for tuning in to Simon Says. To ensure that you never miss an episode, click subscribe and make sure to turn on the notifications by clicking on the notification bell icon see you at the next episode